Well, it's been a busy year for California state legislature between passing a historic budget and trying to find ways to help Californians get back on their feet after record unemployment and financial hardship. I spoke with Assembly Member Brian Mainshine about some of his efforts. The first thing I wanted to talk to you about was the budget. Um, California passed the biggest state budget in, in the state's history. Tell us about what's exactly in this and some of the things that your constituents and people who live here in San Diego might actually notice. Well, it was. It was a great budget. And it, it was a transformational budget, particularly in terms of education. The, the largest amount of funding ever in the history of California for education. Some of the highlights, we were able to fund pre-K, first time ever, every child uh, in the state of California will be able to get pre-K. Uh, and as we know, pre-K is a huge indicator of success in schools. So this is going to have a huge, huge impact statewide. Uh, and we provided nearly $125 billion in funding for that. So this is going to make uh, a really tremendous impact for kids in our state. We also, I think, something that would be particularly important to people here in San Diego and something that was a priority for me was making California kids a priority for UC schools. Um, before it was, if you were, you, you almost had an advantage from being out of state. And it seems like if you grew up here and paid taxes here and went to school in California, you ought to have priority to get into UC. And now that's gonna be the case. We expanded the number of seats for uh, kids who are from California and also limited the number of seats from people who are out of state. So this also is going to have a huge impact. And, you know, you personally uh, pushed some major pieces of legislation over the past year, including securing funding for genome sequencing. Tell me about what exactly that means. Yeah, I'm really proud of this. We, for the last two years, I've worked very hard on this. And so what, what genome sequencing allows, it, al it allows... Uh, us to figure out, or doctors to figure out rare diseases. And rare diseases by definition are very rare. They may affect only a handful of people in the country. So doctors oftentimes aren't able to diagnose it, something they've never seen in their life. So you have this baby, and we all know, you know, you have this baby, you want it to be healthy and happy, you're all excited, and all of a sudden your baby is crying and sick and miserable, and you as a parent are scared. You know, it's traumatic for the parent, it's clearly traumatic for the baby. Uh, and then the doctor oftentimes can't diagnose it. So what ends up happening is treatments are prescribed that don't work. Surgeries are prescribed that don't work. And you look at what that trauma is for the child, the trauma for the parents, and the cost to the system for needless healthcare. And so through genome sequencing, uh, and we do it here locally at Rady Children's Hospital, we're able to now sequence uh, the gene, the genetic material on these babies, and so then can put that into the system and figure out, oh my gosh, this is a rare disease. Here's what the treatment is for that. Uh, and we're having huge successes. It, it's making a huge difference in these families' lives, as you can imagine. Uh, and then also it's really savings to the healthcare system as well. So I was able to get additional funding this year to do even more. We're going to make it open now for Medi-Cal patients. And so it doesn't, you don't have to have private insurance to get this. If you're a Medi-Cal patient and your baby is suffering, you're now going to be eligible to get this genome sequencing. And I think it's going to be really significant. Yeah, it sounds like it's really cutting edge stuff and it's neat for San Diego to kind of be on the forefront of that. Um, I also know that you have been a champion for victims of fertility fraud. I personally, I think I mentioned this to you the last time we chatted, I've done some stories on this and it's, yeah. it's really horrific stuff. Tell me about some of the new steps forward that you have championed for them this past year. Well, Pray, I mean, your stories did get to the heart of it. I mean, this is something that's tragic. You look at the trauma, again, that this causes to women who are going in for fertility treatment and get defrauded. They, have their, they believe the eggs are going to be fertilized by a certain individual, and they're not. And sometimes it's even the doctor in some of these awful cases that the doctor himself uh, does that. And so now, uh, because of my bills over this last uh, session, there's now going to be criminal, additional criminal penalties. And for, in fact, for the first time, really, they're going to be able to be charged criminally because before it was within a year 
of the actual crime being committed. Well, these women, of course, didn't know within a year. Um, so it wouldn't be until down the road when there was a genetic test of some kind that it would even be discovered. So in, in essence, it shielded these doctors from any sort of criminal responsibility. My, my legislation changed it to within a year of discovery it, they had the, to file charges. So now it, you know, if the child is 18, 90, you know, whatever, 30, and finds out that their father is not who they thought it was or who the mother thought it was, now these doctors or whoever is perpetrating it can be held criminally liable. In addition, we also have a civil penalty too uh, to make sure that these people are adequately uh, addressed. And straight ahead on Politically Speaking, why a former SDG&E worker is teaming up with Monica Lewinsky to share his story about what he says are false allegations of racism.